in this current meta, but they may want to go back towards something like the Kaisa instead. I will say as well, though, Samira seems like if you first pick it, then there does seem to be options, right? We we saw that in the first series of the day when top esports were first picking Samira. The Victor was a great option in the mid lane. You can just silence every time she tries to go for the ult. And also just anything that can nullify the insane aggression in that bottom side. But the Samira is the first pick regardless. We see an Alistair and we finally see our first Talia of the day here for Aki. And I'm excited this, for this for Aki because not only is it again the kind of farming style, but lends itself towards going aggressive uh, into these solo lanes if you boss are into the side lanes if you've got a, a top laner or even a support like this alistair who can set up for those easy seismic shoves talia's damage goes through the roof and you can burst out a lot of low health or at least squishy members on edg side there's plenty of opportunity to uh one shot people on talia especially those that like to dash things like samira for example you yeah. dash on that Unraveled Earth, you one-shot yourself. So <laughs> it's not worth I mean, it. We Let saw me it in All-Star. We saw it in All-Star where it was the, the Talia answer to the Samir. I think it was Jackie Love that actually brought it out where it's just like, ah, you want to try and move? Okay, here's an Unra or here's the here's the E down. You're not going anywhere. There's just so much damage that comes through off of just you trying to escape. Yeah, it's, it's so difficult to play against. Scout going to lock in the Oriana once again. Looked phenomenal on it in game number one so not too surprised to see him go for that one again and this time eric goes with the kaiser to try and answer the samira this is the same matchup between ad carries that we saw in both games between top esports and sooning and it was the kaiser coming out on top but whether that's a direct matchup difference is a different conversation yeah, I think like Kaisa does have uh, initial push pressure in that, but when you start to get the Immortal Shield Bones that coming through from the uh, Samira, that's where Samira does take over the lane. Even after kind of the, the Noon Quiver or Vamp Scepter, she does very well. Uh, but we'll have to see how this plays out because, of course, the Alistair there does make it a little bit more difficult for this uh, Samira to go over the aggressive. I'm curious to see what they pair with this Samir as well. I mean, Alistair and Leona have been the go tos, but you can still go towards stuff like the, the Thresh or the Nautilus if you really want to. All right, well, bands coming on through. Yone has been taken off of the board. It's the Gragas and Leona banned by OMG. Is trying to remove some of the, the hard engage that was available for EDG last time around. And I am curious what EDG are going to bring towards that top side. Now that both Aatrox is taken off the board, Orn's taken off the board, the Gragas that they played last game is removed as well. Lucian now banned away from Wounded. Yeah, that was my big worry here, at least on the ADG side, is that you'd end up giving the Lucian over a very strong mid lane matchup, um, and you got something that can then play towards the likes of Aki in the jungle matchup, because Hecarim does pretty well against the the Talia, where it's very difficult to predict where the Hecarim's going to be thanks to that move speed, so getting an easy seismic shove is off the table. However, you're looking towards Renekton. Welcome to the LPL, ladies and gentlemen. In case you haven't been here, enjoy your stay. We're next to the fan <laughs> favorite over here. Not red, or not on that fifth pick, though, but certainly still uh, the go to in a lot of situations. And he's very strong in that. Um, especially when you look towards, again, like the likes of Gore Drinkers. Um, there's been like Stride Breaker. There's been a lot of flexibility in uh, Renekton's build path, but I do expect him to still go towards that Gore Drinker. Yeah. Well, we had a 6% fan vote for OMG in game one. It's now decreased to a 4% fan vote <laughs> oh, for no. OMG in game number two. It's not getting much better. And I've got to say, I don't blame anyone that's voted in that for voting for EDG because uh, game one was not close. It's going to be Volibear locked in here. I'm going to assume that that's going up towards Flandre in the top side. And Mako goes for the Maokai. This is a big bruiser squad that EDG have locked in. Yeah, and again, it's, you've kind of got a, a mix bag i'd say to a certain extent where you do have a, a very heavy like get in on top of everyone's style like the hecarim the samira the volley bear all want to be diving in on top of the opponents but then you've got kind of the the maokai that can look to follow up or at least provide some disengage if necessary if uh, edg do get caught out but overall very dive heavy composition from edg where they are looking to go in go in again and keep going in every opportunity that they get on omg side uh, much more about flanking, much more about controlling space, where you want Newt to be coming in to see if he can get on towards the likes of the Oriana on a flank position, but certainly keeping the, a very strong front line in the Alistair, in this Galio, and buying space for both Aki and uh, Eric in these fights, and 
if the opportunity arises, Eric can play aggressive off of like the flanks that we we're talking about from New, or if uh, the Galio can get in aggressively. Yeah, one of the big questions for me is how aggressively EDG are going to play this composition because I feel like especially once one item comes in, they have a lot of power to just just brawl. I, I want to see them go in it and just try to get into melee rage, try to force the plays here, especially with that Talia that can uh, really ruin things if you let her get ahead. You've got to stop that from happening. You've got to try and shut her down a little bit before she gets too strong, I think is the answer. But I could be wrong. I'm just the play-by-play -play here. But I'm hoping at least that we get a bit of a brawl between these two games because we've we've had some pretty slow games today, Dagda. I want to see one that's uh, a little bit more action-packed. <laughs> I'm not certain how aggressive this is going to be, especially when I look towards, like, uh, EDG side. I mean, Flun or JJ wants to try and, you know, uh, farm up a little bit. Same when you look at Scout. He's more looking to, to farm in towards that later uh, stage where he's got the two items. Maybe you can look towards some aggressive plays in the bottom side, but at least from the way I've seen this matchup between the Alistair and the Maokai go, it seems to be much more about uh, Maokai being able to control brushes with the soft leads, which makes it very difficult for Alistair to find those aggressive engages, specifically if he's running the likes of the Hex Flash. Um, so overall, I think this is more about, hey, look, yeah, one item is nice when we get a bunch of these mythics, but certainly EDG, the two item spike is where they're looking to play around. So we're pushing that 20, what, 23 minute mark before we really start to see any angle. Well, we've got our animated Kentucky Fried chart here on the bottom side of your screen. You can see the Colonel is souped up and he's ready to go for 2021. Uh, he is favoring OMG. I'm guessing he didn't watch game one. That's the only... Uh, logical conclusion honestly to to predict to go mg obviously he's doing it only on picks and things like that but yeah i am he curious turns to off see the how this plays yeah i'm curious to see how this maokai support is going to do now it's not against the samira it's with the samira so i feel like it's got more opportunity to succeed as we do have an invade here from omg level one as they try and brute force their way into the bottom side and that's a lot of respect coming out from edg immediately jj just goes all right off to the top side i go I'm not that bothered. Didn't want red buff anyway. The thing is, though, New had started to wander down in case there was any shenanigans at that fight. So he's going to be late to lane, which means that we can actually see JJ potentially split the map here and just play towards the top side. Now, this does mean that from Viper and Mako's point of view, they've got to play this early game a little bit less aggressive. But when you're a Maokai, level three is really where you're going to be looking before you want to go aggressive with this Samira. So... It's not like you're losing out overly much in this early game. It just means you got to take a, a little bit of a back foot on the aggression. From the game. I am really curious how this bottom lane goes. I feel like I'm going to learn a lot about the bot lane meta watching the, the bot lane duos uh, yeah. duke it out over the next few days because we have so many of these aggressive melee supports that are coming in. Even if it's not complete all-ins, the trades are, are very aggressive trades that you'll see between like your Leonas, your Alistairs, even things like the Maokai. So I am curious on how this one goes. Now that the Maokai is on the side of the Samira, obviously Samira does incredibly well. Aki's moved into the mid lane though. Scout could be in trouble here. The Taunt flashed away from, but hey, they got a flash. They're happy with that one. And this is now where Scout's going to have to play very, very safe. Loriana without a flash is very vulnerable. And he hasn't opted in towards Cleanse in this mid lane either. So expect a repeat gank where Wumi just flashes in on top of Scout and takes that back. And even look at where the wave is positioned. Wumi's in a pretty all right spot to just hold that where it is. This is so smart from Aki. He could go and just take his top quadrant that you would expect. Here we go, though. Enough about the jungle because Mako is in trouble. One more tick and it's going to be a kill here as Cole grabs that one with the ignite. Now, Viper's jumped way too deep. JJ's here to back him up, though. And Eric's the one in trouble. Teleport coming out as well as a flash. And it looks like EDG are forced away. Nice flash from Viper at the last second. Unfortunate for Viper actually cancelled an auto there, so wasn't able to quite get the kill onto Cold. But a huge amount invested on both sides there. Um, but it is OMG who get the first kill. And Eric and Cold coming out on top in what was a match... Well, not a matchup, but certainly a lane where they struggled in game number one. 
So far, so good for the side of OMG. And a, a really, really nice answer to what was going on. You could see JJ was trying to get into his... He was trying to invade the bottom side. Aki moves over to the bottom side instead of taking the top quadrants so that they can match. And then shenanigans happen in the bottom side. Aki's there to answer. So really nicely done. And this is what I was talking about for that bot lane play, is that the level 2 is much stronger from Alistair. You had started with the saplings from Mako, so he's not quite able to provide the same amount of CC and uh, play in this uh, aggressive stance. But, however, Viper you can see there, not quite able to finish off cold. JJ comes down, but instantly they got to back off because you've got Wooming coming down. He has Flash, and there's still a huge amount of damage between Eric and even a revisiting cold that could turn that around. So, nice job from OMG to shut down the follow-up. But again, Aki, he's out and trying to get aggressive here. So, Aki is on the top side. But Flandre, I think, realizing something's up, he's going to go all the way back to his tower to recall here. And we're just going to have a bit of a reset from both of our junglers here. They're going to head back to base, grab some items for themselves, and then get back out onto the map. First Drake is on the map, and it is going to be a Mountain Drake to start us off here, Doctor. Yeah, I don't see much pressure coming in, uh, at least for a while, for, for either side, honestly, towards this dragon. Um, I think unless Eric and Cold can get a massive push off on the bot side, and maybe they can turn it into it. But honestly, I think you're better off on OMG's side trying to continue this pressure through the lanes. Like, I want to see Wooming flashing in on top of Scout to set up a kill there with Aki. I want to continue to see with all summoners burnt on the bottom side, OMG trying to make that work. Like... Aki has a lot of opportunities now to solidify this lead and start to slow down. And I, I do want to talk about some of the CS leads that we've got going on as well, because you're, you're mentioning Aki trying to snowball. Look at the mid lane right now. Scout, 20 CS up for him, or 10 CS up for himself, because uh, Wooming's just managed to get onto the wave there. But there was a similar lead in the bottom side as well, as Eric managed to shove that in, managed to, to close that gap. The dragon is going to go down. It's OMG to take it. So really, really good start to things for them. Feeling a lot better. Although, I think game one, they actually got the first strike and the first kill as well. Yeah. And it never ended well. The thing here is, well, like, looking back at your, your mid lane point is, don't forget it was uh, Wumin who TP'd down, which meant he lost a lot of that CS. And that's where we're seeing a big amount of that lead come from for Scout. Um, so overall, again, EDG, they don't have to worry too much about, you know, these early dragons or how... Like if a kill or two is going across the OMG, because they fully outscale. They're the composition that can wait until two items and come online and kill everyone. But if they can pick up a kill on new, they'll take it. Yeah, they're certainly quite happy to go for that one. Pushes him back into the fray, and there's no way out here for new. He'd already flashed. And maybe should have just accepted that he was going to go down here instead of going for the flash there. Nicely done. Flandre to grab the kill and two assists on the team as well. So very nice little pickup for the side of EDG. And, of course, as you said, that assist going across the scout was pretty impactful because he had roamed the entire way up. If he hadn't got involved in that kill, uh, might have missed out on quite a bit. As you can see, that wave was shoved in underneath Terror. But this does open up the opportunity for Wooming. Aki's in the area as well. Four-man bot is on the cards. Here we go. TP, though, comes out immediately from scout as Viper could be in trouble. But they go straight on towards his teammate Mako is removed from the play. In goes the Galio Double Taunt. And this is beautiful from OMG. What a dive coming out from the squad. So well played. And the correct call from uh, OMG, when you see that TP coming in, a lot of people start to get antsy. OMG realized it's the Orianna coming in. She's not going to be able to turn this around. It's not like she provides a heap of CC and a bunch of damage. Like, we are still fine to go for this play. They get the double kill and the teleport out from Scout with nothing lost in return. Really nicely done. This is a cleaner OMG than what we saw in game number one. Game number one, it felt like they weren't really sure what to do and they were a little bit all over the place. Here in game two, it does feel like they've sort of got themselves together a little bit and, and feeling confident with these kinds of players. And it's an easier composition to execute as well. Like, they can still threaten these dragons. They can go towards these more aggressive plays. So, at least in that respect, the, the gripes that we had in game one won't be rearing their head this time. The only thing is they need to keep up this tempo because as we said, it's EDG will start to run ahead, but this is what OMG need to do. Go for these aggressive plays onto the bot lane while they've got the advantage there and use the fact that, hey, this Orianna can't do too much right now. Viper hasn't got towards that immortal shield bow. Pyro Mandate is not completed for Mako. This is a weak bot lane that we can look to punish. 
and punish they have so far. And I have to say, the Maokai support, we've seen it twice now, and it has not looked good in either game. I'm surprised uh, to see it come out so often. Like, I wasn't expecting it. I thought we'd see, like, Thresh, Leonis, even Sets before we saw something like a Maokai. It, I, they picked it twice now into the Alistair, and it hasn't really been up my alley either. Yeah. And the first time I thought it was like, okay, Samira, she can block everything he does. Fair enough, it didn't work out. This time, there isn't that same situation going on, but it still just doesn't feel like it, it's offering very much to the to the fights. Yeah, it seems to be a case of like, hey, look, Alistair is going to go for this engage, right? So, hey, uh, you've got the Maokai that can try and stop the initial W with his own Q. You've got ways to move around it. Like, you can counter the, the Pulverize if you time it correctly with Maokai on the uh, Twisted Advance. And in these big team fights, Alistair goes in, well, Maokai Ultimate goes out. But the problem is, it's not really working out for them. Um, the level 2 is so much stronger, as we talked about, for Alistair. And OMG did a really good job of using that spike, getting on towards Mako. Because uh, although Maokai is tanky when he builds a lot of items and goes for gets the Aftershock proc, at level 2, when he's only got one way of doing it, it doesn't matter. Oh, cold! Look at that. That is just a gorgeous combo. Straight onto Scout. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that one, Azoriana. He actually flashed kind of after the play was already done. It, no, it, it was super nice coming through from Code. Like, he predicted that oh. Scout was going to flash it. He headbutts, holds on to the Pulverize, and then flashes to follow the, the flash from Scout to get the Pulverize. That is really, really smart from Oh, I, I want to... I want to see the replay now because I I missed the the intricacies of that one. I'm 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 excited to rewatch. Maybe maybe I've now messed this up and I put myself in a hole. But at least that was what it looked like. The resolution is a little bit funky on our side. But uh, yeah yeah. So when it comes in here, so watch. He goes for the headbutt, waits, oh and God. follows the flash from Scout. Really good job from Cold, and that's something that um a lot of Alistair's will try and do, but it's so difficult to, to try and predict because there's a couple of different combos you can go for. You can either commit to the headbutt and then flash to follow when they're being like pushed away from you. Or in this case, Cold just reads it perfectly. Knows the scout is going to be fast enough from the trigger finger and just follows the flash safely towards the terror. And I mean, Cold, get up and take a bow. Also, Dagda, our resident Alistair expert, <laughs> <laughs> giving us the download and all the different combos that are available. And now Dragon's on the cards for OMG off the back of that pick, off the back of the control that they have in this map. There's also a Rift Herald that was taken by Aki, so they're really starting to snowball for themselves. That's going to be, what, almost a 2,000 gold lead, one and a half in favor of OMG. They've got two Drakes for themselves. They'll be able to extend the gold lead with this Rift Herald as well. It's all looking pretty good right now. And the big thing here is that, like, this is, apart from, like, I suppose, like, the Viper Mako mistake happened at level two and they got the kill but this has been omg proactively punishing that over and over again they've got viper and mako by the scruff of their neck they put them into the dirt by going for this four-man dive and now they've used that pressure that they got on bot side to open up cold into the rest of the map now using it to go and pressure onto scout and this is really strong play from omg and not what we saw from them last split they weren't this proactive and specifically cold wasn't this proactive in the early stages except sometimes where he played blitzcrank then he was yeah true, i really true. like cold's okay, blitzcrank yeah. specifically his blitzcrank i've always been quite <laughs> impressed by can't wait until he brings it out again cold no i'm just uh just in case you're watching right Give now shout, probably yeah, yeah. i would think he's probably not since he's playing but <laughs> if he, he know, is just in case there's probably a lot more issues going on <laughs> if he is actually listening right now you know i think that might be a uh, against a couple yeah. of the rules that we have going on here. We're going to see a Weibo post later that's uh, OMG disqualified cold watching English stream. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. Either way, we are going to see Eric going with the Kraken Slayer on the Kai. So this is something we talked about earlier where we saw the Gale Force coming out um, instead of the Kraken Slayer. This has been the more typical build that we've seen, generally speaking. Is cold actually going to go under the... What? Where did he go? They pulled out a magic trick. Mako has disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> put a tree back into the ground just to make that one work rather than pulling uh, the rabbit out of the house and this is what I thought like the big issue that I have with a Maokai support is he's not tanky like Imperial Mandate does not give you tank stats and you're heavily reliant on just the aftershock to keep you alive and in that situation where you're just getting bombarded with CC you can't do anything 
This is like Clash of the Titans in the top lane. Yeah. Flytrae wins the 1v1. Both of them go into Mega Mode. I felt like I was watching an episode of Godzilla. But I don't know why News fighting. Like, Flandre, the, the Volley Bear wins this matchup. Like, where you get Gore Drinker, yeah, it helps out. And you can go a little bit easy, easy, evener in the trades. But right now, especially when you've got the uh, the Grievous Wounds picked up by the Volley Bear, you're not winning that. It felt like he was going to win it to start with. But once the shield comes through, as well as the damage and the the kind of uh, the buffs that Flandre gets from his ultimate... It becomes incredibly difficult in the sustained fight. So, unfortunate one for New there. Overestimated what he could do in the 1v1. And now you can see that this gold lead is still very much in favor of OMG. They're about two and a half thousand gold ahead right now. And 500 of that is going to come from these tower plates that are all exclusively in that bottom lane. And I want to go just touch and briefly on that top lane play. Like, New, you can maybe trade when, as you said, when you get Gore Drinker, and you try and play around the shield where you use the the root or the W, the ruthless predator from Renekton, to get rid of the shield. But if you're not playing around that, like Volley Bear is going to win every single time. Like New, not only went for a very weird play, but also the fact that he misplayed on the play as well. Like just is so strange. All right, OMG grouping up here. Harold not going to be up right now. Maybe looking to go for a dive on the top side. Honestly, they're positioning very aggressively as Mecha could be out of position. But New in a two versus one right here. He's underneath the tower, though, and he's pretty tanky. So he should be all right with that one. And the minion wave arrives. So Flandre is just going to have to settle for a bit of CS. Should be able to push New off of the tower now, though. Should be able to grab that tower for himself. It will be traded in the top side as OMG get pressure here and push on in towards the tier one. I actually see this as a win for OMG. With JJ showing on bot side, OMG can commit to getting this tier 2. Or sorry, the, the tier 1 in the top lane. Even though you're trading, the gold is going on to the, the people that you wanted to on OMG's side. You're getting it on to this Tali, you're getting it on to the Kai'Sa. Whereas Flandre, who's gone full tank Volley Bear, it don't really matter if he gets a, this a little bit of extra gold. Like, realistically, I want to see JJ starting to play more so around uh, Viper Mako, because Ma Viper specifically has been put pretty heavily on the back foot here has got his immortal shield bow but he's a long way from collector and he's not going to be hitting the same two item spike relative to the rest of the team and if that's what you're playing for here is edg like you want to make sure that viper is at least relevant so you can fight when we're looking at this third dragon which is up now in just a few moments or even the the soul potential for OMG. and i think that collector is uh kind of underrated ever since they nerfed it a bit i think people have kind of misunderstood quite how powerful of an item it still is like especially on champions like samira and misfortune where you're hitting everybody anyway if you just have to tick them to just a, a little bit lower health and and you'll be able to get the execute so it's incredibly incredibly strong that second item is a massive massive spike for Viper. Speaking of Viper, he managed to grab a top tier one and it was in trade for the third Drake now for OMG. Aki grabbing that one. That's sole point for OMG and suddenly EDG can't just play as slow as they want. And this is the thing as well. When we look at EDG's comp, they're pretty first orientated. Like it is a go in with JJ, the Onslaught of Shadow, Shockwave, get the Smear ult. Like this is what they want to do. If you've got an Ocean Soul that comes in and maybe it's OMG now surviving that little bit longer, getting more damage off, starting to heal up in these fights, it becomes a lot more difficult for EDG to actually play the style that they want to. OMG grouping up to try and fight for this Rift Herald here. EDG's here as well. We could have a 5v5 on our hands here, Dagda, as Cold has to use his ult to survive the Shockwave. Flandre forced out, flashes over the wall, and it is going to defuse itself. Just testing the waters here from either team. Neither really committing to the fight. But OMG, ultimately, they used less. And that means they can move up towards the Herald. It looks like they are fully concerned, are hmm. confident that they can go towards this. They still have new on this bot side. Could TP in, but I don't know. It looks like they're not convinced here. I guess Cold already used his ult, right? The Alistair ult's quite big, but yeah. I figured with Flandre and Scout both having used their ults, I figured maybe that was an opportunity, but I guess they're deciding just to push into the mid lane instead, I, try and grab the tower. I would have preferred to see them go for that fight. Like, 
Uh, you're definitely, as we said, like the composition that spikes off of one item is OMG side. You've got the Kraken Slayer, you've got the Rocket Belt for Wooming. This is where you want to fight and like power home through that mid, mid, uh, the mid spike that you have. But that's not what they're doing here. Instead, they're giving over control to EDG, not looking for fights they can try and go for. And yeah, I mean, Alistair Ultimate is important. But the, the flash in, if you can get a flash into a headbutt pulverize, that's more and is going to do a lot more for setting up the team, particularly with Woomin who can follow up with that ultimate as well. well scouts arrived in the mid lane. We'll be able to catch that wave. And uh, honestly, I don't think we're going to see anything for the next couple of minutes, Dagda, because that Drake is coming up in 2 minutes and 41 seconds. And that Drake is going to be everything right here. OMG, if they can get an Ocean Soul, uh, it's going to be incredibly difficult for EDG to do anything for the rest of the game. Because bear in mind, they won a team fight. They won a scrap. It's a lot harder to do that against a team that just won't die. On the opposite side, though, EDG are getting towards the point where actually they can go for these team fights against OMG. And at the moment, OMG are doing a good job of getting their waves in order so they can look for that aggressive play over towards Dragon. Already, Wumi pushed the top side. You got New, who's resting on bot side. Oh, Scout's trying to get a 1v1 with New right here. A lot of damage done onto the Renekton. He flashes forwards, though, and that is the power of the croc. Forces the flash out from Scout, and uh, Scout suddenly thinking about some of his life decisions. That was... That was a little bit close. Uh, flash for flash. New comes out on top. Both have TP. Uh, I'd argue that the Orianna not having Shockwave for this fight is probably more impactful than the, the Renekton not having that ultimate, but they're pretty close in parity. However, it looks like OMG are on par. Oh, they've managed to find JJ, but he gets knocked out to safety. JJ, I think that was Onslaught of Shadows over the wall there. He's getting himself out. That would have been such a big... That would have been absolutely huge for OMG. They now have three ults on cooldown, though. It is a lot invested, though. And, I mean, look, it's a minute until uh, Dragon, so you will get these ultimates back up from both Scout and for New. However, the bigger thing here is that that flash from Cold could have been absolutely monumental. If you're looking for a flanking opportunity to get onto Scout and Viper and set up Eric, New, Aki for that uh, Seismic Shove, that was your play. But now, not having that flash makes it a lot more difficult. You have to try and wind up with the Hex Hex Flash and give more opportunity for EDG to respond. Well, EDG now pushing out that mid lane and trying to get into the river. Scout is actually recalling. He's going to have his teleport available. He needs to get back ASAP because we've got 20 seconds on this Ocean Drake. And just to reset in case anyone's just joining in. Oh, no. This is Ocean Soul for OMG if they can get it. Herald comes down in the mid lane just to try and get some pressure. Try and get the position here for EDG on the dragon. So EDG know where the cow is. It's actually, he's just been spotted. Oh no, Cold. He's completely alone. In comes the Galio to back him up. But they're on Flandre who is totally invincible. They don't have any damage. And EDG starting to fight off strong. Can they turn it into more though? Because Scout has kept two people out of the fight for so damn long. Eric is going to be able to answer. It's one for one, tank for tank here. But EDG, with much stronger health bars right now, will start the drip. So the Cole tried to go for the full wraparound play where he walked down past Krugs in that bottom lane. However, it meant that he got spotted by a ward that was just about to die in that brush just beside bot lane. So he got spotted. So EDG knew the whole time where Cold was. And it meant that they tracked him back up. Scout waiting perfectly for him to enter that brush. And EDG can turn. They get a dragon for themselves. And uh, Cold, I think you should back away from this one. It's done. It's over. Go home, buddy. Go home. Yeah, this is not the... Especially on that much HP, this is not the play anymore. Fantastic <laughs> stuff from EDG to keep themselves in the game. Because bear in mind, they were 2,000... Or they are currently 2,000 gold down. If they'd lost that Drake, I think this one would have been just about done and dusted. But fantastic stuff. And EDG keep themselves in the game. Yeah, so Cold got spotted out by Ward on that bot side, which meant that EDG knew he's here the whole time. They just collapse in on top of him. You've got everyone on OMG trying to see if they can keep them safe. And it means EDG are able to find the fight that they want because you don't have these easy flank opportunities for New, who's taken low thanks to Scout. You've got an easy setup coming through from Viper as well because he knows exactly where everyone is. It's just such a nice fight for EDG. So now EDG 
it feels like a little bit more in control of their own destiny now. The early game, I feel like we've been just watching them waiting for the ability to fight back, waiting to be able to actually do anything in this game. And that fight feels like maybe it was the turning point. One huge caveat to that, though, is Eric right now. Eric, I said, we, we were coming into this series saying, look, keep your eyes on the AD carries. Each of them has something to prove here. Game number one, it was all about Viper. Game number two right now, Eric has his three items on his Kaiser. He is going to be terrifying in this next fight if he's left to his own devices. So keep a look out for when he uses that killer instinct to try and assassinate someone. Still though, OMG playing this a little bit slower. They have new off in the side lane now. It will need to be answered by Flandre, who's starting to teeter down towards there. But OMG do have control of this area. And when you're pulling Flandre off towards this bot side, it means there's not really anyone on EDG who can face check in towards this Baron, which is why OMG feel confident to start. Well, they're, they're just going to go for it right here. 6,000 remaining is JJ is going to walk in. They now know that this is going on, and I think OMG have to pull away. Teleport being channeled. It's just JJ absolutely destroyed by the entire squad of OMG. He's managed to stop the Baron attempt at very least, but I feel like they could maybe just rinse and repeat. Yeah, I mean, they can just go back. However, there was quite a bit used, but honestly, they're all going to be back up, and now Flandre versus New. Let's see. Scout is here. Still Vipers alive as well. Bear in mind these carries have a lot of damage and a lot of AoE damage specifically. Viper just blocked Talia Wall. I, this champion is ridiculous. In they go anyway. New onto the back line. Viper still surviving for now and he gets the first kill of the fight. In goes Eric, but he can't assassinate the enemy. He carries Shockwave onto Eric. He still survives. One HP, one auto does the trick and Scout walks away with his life. Cold now is alone in the back line. Did manage to finish off Viper, I believe. But he's not going to be able to get away with his life as Mako looking to chase him down against the other one. Cold, the Moo Cow King takes another kill. He'll take down Scout, but the damage was done. Despite the fact that it was a four versus five, they did a, such a good job on EDG's side to kite back. Scout with that shockwave, shutting down Eric, getting rid of what was the last dribble of damage for OMG. Because when you look at Aki's mana bar, he's got nothing left in the tank. Now... EDG get the opportunity to clear out this Baron area, get some control back. And that's really what was an issue here, was JJ's not tanky enough to face check in towards Baron. Mako isn't either. He's only, he's gone pretty much this full AP build. So when someone needs to go and poke their nose in to see if OMG have started Baron, it's JJ who pays the price. Yep, JJ gets caught out and taken down, but luckily for him, the rest of his squad doing really, really well. And we said... We've got to keep our eyes on Eric in the fight. Keep your eyes on when he's going to kill her instinct. He tried to go in and finish off Viper, but Viper walked away with his life. And when Eric was then left out to dry, couldn't finish the kill, got taken down by Scout instead. Luckily, Cold was there to finish Viper off, as apparently he's an assassin, but ultimately EDG win out. We come back to Dragon, though, Bunch. 20 seconds now. Ocean Soul for OMG. EDG need to do everything to keep OMG out of River. Because if it ends up in being into a, towards a 50-50 smite, that's way too risky for EDG. They need to find the fight before that Dragon gets taken down. EDG the top half of this one. As Cold wow. and New are going on an adventure together. They've got a ward in the yeah, back so pit. They're going for a flank. They've managed here. to sneak over. Yeah, Hop, hopped over the wall with the hex flash. Nice board there from Viper, though. So they will be able to spot them out on this flank opportunity. There we go. They're just going to be tanking the Drake for now. The wall comes out. Uh, I mean, they've stopped him doing Drake. <laughs> they can't really... I, I wasn't sure if they were going to try and burst it. Look at Eric's health, by the way. That is exclusively from Mako. Just throwing saplings into brushes. That is the... It, it's basically Teemo in support is what Maokai's support is right now. It's so annoying. I want to keep an eye on the waves, though, because this whole time, EDG have a massive wave dying to that top lane turret. Certainly do. They're moving in onto the Drake here. Aki stepping on forwards. Cold is on the flank, and he wants to try and make this play happen. But Viper zipped over to the backside of the fight. In comes Galio as well, as JJ was the first casualty here. Scout is alone, and Eric wants the 1v1. Flashes the shockwave. Beautifully done by Eric. And OMG are looking to claim this one. Viper's ult is denied. And now the rest of EDG are taken apart. This is soul for OMG.
It's going to be Soul and potentially Baron as well. They can get both here as actually mixed calls across the board. No one really seems sure as to what they're going to do. But either way, OMG played that beautifully. Cold once again finding that perfect flank opportunity. Gets in onto JJ. And with that jungler dead, there's no opportunity for the uh, dragon to be stolen. And EDG lose the fight. Beautiful stuff here from OMG and kind of against all odds as well because especially after game number one i had pretty much zero expectations of omg coming into game number two eric especially looking fantastic aki as well the most hyped up player on this roster coming in and living up to that on this talia pick now with a baron omg looking poised to finish this one off with a six thousand gold lead i've been really impressed with the way omg have found these fights and cold specifically like getting in there onto JJ was not an easy task. You can see even at the very beginning, Viper is like pieced out. He's like flashed straight away. He doesn't trust where Cold is going to go. But still, separating out the fight is all that they need to do. Allowing Scout to be isolated so Eric can pick him off. Making sure that Viper isn't able to get into these fights as easily as he would like to. This was just so well played from Orange. Really beautifully done. And now EDG are finding themselves in a position where they are fighting from their backs against the walls right they they're down in items on pretty much every character they now are against an ocean soul in these fights as well realistically they're going to need a miracle to be able to finish this one out in a 2-0 and the question for omg is how clean can they be because they need to finish this off clean nobody gets caught out no, no shenanigans last game people were getting caught out all the time so they need to cut that out and finish this one out in style it is going to be pretty difficult. This is where um, Aki, now with the Talia, takes on a, a another facet of her kit, which is having that Weaver's Wall to be able to connect across the several lanes. So you do have New and Looming who have gone towards these side lanes to start pushing them in, getting these towers. But at any point in time, Aki can come join them. So for the likes of Flandre and also for uh, Scout, who's got to go deal with these side lanes, they are never sure that it's an isolated Weaver. Lantre just kind of hold the wave away from the tower and try and clear things off there as the rest of EDG have to deal with the mid wave. In the meantime, though, Wooming gets to push on the top side completely uncontested. Aki can move up to help him as well. And this should be a tier two taken as I really don't think Scout can stick around here. If Aki finds the seismic shove, that would be one dead Oriana pretty much immediately. And this is the power of Baron, right? When you have a team that can be off in these side lanes, you're going to be able to get pressure onto the towers. Cold moving in as well. Tank. wants to get shots in but Flandre doing a really good job of knowing exactly how far forward he can step and what he can actually threaten and I'm actually kind of impressed by EDG's defense against this Baron yeah you can see OMG are trying to make them dance and um, they're trying to pull members down towards the inhibitors so the Galio can take this top lane but it will eventually crack it was only a matter of time really and now this is where the pressure starts to ramp for EDG this is 4v3 in favor of EDG surely Surely they should go in and find that one. I guess it is a Talia though, so he they can't. could always be reinforced. Talia and Galio. In. The second you go in, Galio just creates so much space, and that's why you can't really. Um, and plus, who who have you really got? I mean, Flandre can try and go for the flash and then ult in or something along those lines to close the distance, yeah. but it's actually relatively hard unless you've fully committed an EDG to get any of these big um, big ultimate cooldowns out. Well, I was just complimenting her EDG on defending. Eric goes in. Look at this onto Viper. 1v1 on the AD carries, and it's going to go the way of Eric. Beautifully done there. Gets out with his life because he's got a GA as well as Cold. Going to tank up the whole team. News there. Fighting against Flandre. Cold goes in. Looks for the pulverize. Can't quite get the headbutt back into the team, and he answers with his own life. But ultimately, OMG are winning the fight. If it's long fights like this, they will take it all day long with an Ocean Soul. And that's three inhibs down. But they want more than just inhibs. They want the game. Onslaught of Shadows through the entire team here. It's a lot of damage, but no follow-up available. Scout can't kill these players. They're too damn tanky. He's going to be taunted up, knocked up, bashed around as the rest of OMG are looking to close things out. New jumps onto him. Goes for the Gore Drinker as well, just as a bit of insult to injury. Take down the final kill and take down the Nexus. OMG are pushing us to game three. And it's about damn time we saw some life out of OMG because game one did not look good at all. But going back to simplicity, early ganking jungler for Aki who can still farm but certainly put the pressure onto the map. 
will mean onto something where he can also still play the map but have a bit of tankiness this seems to be the winning formula now coming through for omg going again towards that more just team fight orientated style that they can play so damn well and honestly i'm so glad that omg have showed us a little bit more here because <laughs> off of game number one and off of the expectations a lot of people had for this team had that just been two games back to back where omg kind of just flounder and then die it would have been a really bad look to start the season let's remember this is the first game of the season for omg so managing to push this to a three game series managing to even up with edg is a really really good sign that there is stuff available here for omg this isn't a roster you can just count out by default and i've got to give a massive mental praise to cold because literally from level two they get the play on Tomeko, they get the kill in the bot yep. lane, completely shifting the dynamic of that bot side fully in favor of OMG. And from that point forward, OMG did not drop the ball. Continually four-man dive towards that bot lane so then they could get the advantages that they need to. Cole transitioning that pressure into mid lane, getting the kill on towards Scout with that beautiful play, predicting the flash. This was so well done by Cold. The entire thing orchestrated from this Alistair. And I want to give credit to him because honestly without that initial play on Tomeko I don't think they would have had the tools as OMG to as cleanly close this game out and then from the team as a whole to understand where they're strong how to play the map how to separate the team and find more of these wins was such a good look for OMG that I wasn't expecting I thought we'd see some like mistakes come through some um, holes in the armor but we just really didn't see anything yeah, it was clean. And I'm, I'm really impressed by Eric as well, especially on this Kaiser. Had a really, really good game for himself. Was willing to make those calls to, to go for the killer instincts, try and 1v1 Viper, try and force the plays and, and stop Viper being a significant threat in this game. Really, really well played by Eric. And I feel like I have to compliment Eric when he does well because I've been pretty critical of Eric, especially during NEST, especially during Devastia Cup as well. So I said I'll give him a clean slate coming into LPL and so far, so good. 50% of games, he's looked really good. And I think that's the big thing here is that I didn't have the highest expectations for Eric, but to see the confidence in which he's willing to go for these plays, like that last one at the top lane turret, or top lane inhibitor turret, where he just flies on and gets the kill onto Viper. He knows he's going to get out with the Guardian Angel, has the support of his team. Like, that's the thing that is missing from a lot of, like, the, the AD carries that we have in the LPL right now is that they don't have that killer instinct that we expected from the likes of Uzi. Instead, they're more kind of role-oriented players. This is a, a great to see from this rookie AD carry that he's willing to take these aggressive plays and make them work. Yeah, beautiful stuff coming out from Eric. Beautiful stuff coming out from the whole squad of OMG and EDG have to go back to the drawing board. We're going in a game three, but first we're going to jump into a break. We'll be back in a few minutes time, so don't 